So today we're going to be reviewing the Froth Pack 200. Uh, what I have down here is the Froth Pack 200. I have a 3M full face mask uh, respirator, and this is all brand new. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk you through, you know, how to assemble all this stuff, put on your personal protective equipment, which is PPE, which includes the face mask here, respirator. Uh, I have a it says breathable hooded coverall by Everbuilt. So uh, this uh, will cover your entire body, arms, you know, with a little hood over your head. So between the hood and the face mask, you'll be completely covered as I also have a pair of latex gloves. So we're gonna seal all that up. I've got my construction boots on, so there's no exposed part of, the, of my body. Um, in addition to the full face mask here, I also have some 3N's 3M lens covers and so the important thing about this is that if you should have any mist you know come back to your face then the lens covers will protect that full face mask. For the 3M full face mask uh, I bought a medium size for myself and just for reference I'm about six foot three and a half 180 pounds or so and um, we're gonna see you know how that fits me. This Another tool that I have here is a digital thermometer. Now what this will do for you here is you'll be able to, to click on this, the trigger here. There is a digital screen here. We're gonna go ahead and point this on the wall. According to the manufacturer's directions, you wanna have a 60 degree surface temperature. Currently I have 72.5. Uh, you want to have the froth pack itself you know, acclimated to the room temperature. So there's a little temperature gauge on the side of the box there, a little label basically, that indicates the temperature of uh, the containers. Originally when I bought this, these containers from Lowe's for about 349 or 369, don't really remember, uh, but Lowe's ironically sold the Froth Pack 200. So I think that's awesome, you know, for the DIYers, and the uh, maybe even the small contractors or a contractor with a small job. So, uh, so that was 369. The uh, the face mask, the full face mask, I bought from Sherwin Williams. Not Sherwin Williams, the regular store that you go to. I went to a commercial center and bought that. Uh, I'm sure you can buy it online. Maybe I can you know do a little link below for purchasing that. The hooded coverall, uh, the digital thermometer here and anything else that might be used during this project, okay? So, like I said, the uh, surface temperature was 72.5. I have this house set to roughly about 70, 72 degrees or so. So we got the air temperature, we got the surface temperature. Uh, other precautions that you need to take is to open up, you know, some windows, maybe, you know, front and back door, let the air flow through, especially when it comes to ventilating the house uh, for about four hours, okay? I got all this personal information from my buddy Eric Comfort, who is a spray foam contractor for roughly about 15 or 20 years. I've known him for about 10 or 12. And so I called him and asked him for all of his advice on how to spray this stuff, the precautions, etc. I did plenty of uh, YouTube search videos from the you know, Dow Froth Pack to make sure that I've learned basically everything I need to do. And you need to cover things like your windows, if you have any furniture in the room or nearby that you might get any mist or overspray. All right, so now we're at the unboxing stage of the project here where we're going to go ahead and remove the 3M face mask. A little protective cover. And go ahead and open up the cartridges, okay? Now these uh, snap on, you know, where you, you put it at, uh, what is it, up here, and then go ahead and rotate them down into place. This one might be down and then up. There we go, that one's down and up. And then we can go ahead and put on, there's uh, protective layers here with this little media filter. Going to go ahead and slip that over the surface of it. Make sure those are on real good. All right, 
On to the next thing. We have the coveralls. Now, once again, I bought these from Lowe's. I'm sure they're available online. Everbuilt, breathable hooded coverall. Uh, fits most wearers up to six foot two in height. So we're going to go ahead and take those out of the package. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and add on one of these 3M lens covers. This is a self-adhesive item. So there's a little sticky part to one side, a little sticky part to the other. Go ahead and line that up carefully right over the nose piece. There's a little notch in the top to line up with the top of the mask. Uh, the adhesive piece is actually attached more to the gray plastic and not so much the clear. Oh, there we go. A little bit off to the side there. All right. Make sure those are down good. Now you want to take your hands, cover up, suck in. For those of you that may not have been able to hear me very well, you I learned this in the army with my gas mask. Uh, put your hands over the outside here on both sides suck in and if the mass sucks to your face then you've got a good seal even with all this all right so i'm gonna go ahead and put on my coveralls all right pretty good fit okay so like i said this has a hoodie over it it'll cover the whole mask once you get the mask on now let's talk about getting this uh, unit ready for for uh, mixing and setup and stuff. I've literally never opened up this, this box. Inside uh, contains an instruction manual here. Now I have seen this online before, so uh, I've already read through it. Let's go ahead and get the unit set up. Now, inside you'll have your bag of nozzles. There's uh, four little wide area nozzles, and you'll know that by the little notch in the side of it here. And you'll have some areas that are designed to get into small little crevices, and those do not have the notch in. Those are clear. The ones that are for the wide area pattern, those are blue. Now, inside here, uh, you've got your spray nozzle with the hose. Okay. And you want to shake up this part A and part B. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of the box so you can see what that's like here. So here's the, the temperature gauge that I was talking about. It'll indicate with a, a blue color here that it's 65 and if you see the 75 here in a pinkish red then that means the temperatures you know have met that temperature. So here on the containers you'll see that the red is the ISO which is the part A component and the uh, polyol is the part B. We just refer to it as poly so the next step here is to go ahead and agitate. Now I'd recommend doing this for about five minutes according to the information that I saw online. Uh, I wish I could somehow spin it and mix it with a little paddle mixer like we do with uh, paint and drywall mud, but that's not really the case. So let's go ahead and aggressively mix it here. And I won't make you uh, wait and sit through all this, okay? Alright, so we got our cross ventilation set up. Let's go ahead and uh, take our rubber gloves, our latex gloves here. And we got to take the petroleum package out where the mixing nozzles are at. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is clear the hose of the air and make sure the chemicals are flowing evenly. Right now, Part uh, B, I believe, the, the lighter part here, 
is about here, and part A, the ISO, is right about here. So we want to make sure this is even, and we got a good even fan spray. Okay. Now um, I'm gonna go get my trash can and blow it into the trash can. Make sure everything's flowing even. All right, I got my I got my trash bag here. It's a contractor's trash bag. Uh, we need to put on the rest of our equipment. Make sure that your arms are sealed up here, overlapping the latex gloves, both sides. Let's go ahead and put on our full face mask. Be careful when you reach, you know, because these things, at least for me, will come up. Uh, I'm going to put on my face mask and clear the nozzle. Once that's cleared, I'm going to start spray foaming the walls, okay? Now, one thing to keep in mind, it's very important, that's why I've added a uh, fire extinguisher, is that you do not want to put on more than two inches of this foam or any foam really. So I'm not going to go into all the details of open cell and closed cell, but you want to spray it a little bit, it's going to expand. You know that that three and a half inch, you know, that two by four is three and a half inches thick, right? So spray it a little bit, let it expand out. And if it's going to be more than two inches, you got to let it cool down. So better to be safe than sorry. Otherwise, uh, what could happen is the combustion. And that means that basically you have flames traveling up the wall in which we need the fire extinguisher. So we're not going to let that happen, right? Just not because we're too anxious. Let's go ahead and put on the mask and get started. You may be able to hear me because I have my lavalier mic on, but uh, if not, hopefully you can just learn by example here. The best places to buy the Froth Pack 200 is either on Amazon with the link in the description below or at Lowe's for $339 plus tax. I'm going to spray two coats of spray foam on this wall in order to control the thickness and heat that is created by the chemical process of spraying foam. When spraying closed cell spray foam like the frost pack, you do not want to spray any more than two inches thick of expanded foam, otherwise the heat can be too much and possibly start a fire. Do not overfill the stud or joist cavity with closed cell foam. It is extremely hard to remove the excess. Trust me, I had a spray foam contractor completely fill up the walls of a wine cellar and I regretted not having him do the shaving that took me two days to cut flush with the studs. The Froth Pack 200 will fill this 72 square feet of wall cavities about 2.5 inches thick with one kit for $339. Or you can do 216 square feet with three kits for $339 each plus tax, which is $1,100.90. A spray foam contractor will cost a minimum of $1,200 and you'll get about 600 square feet at a 2 inch thickness. If you have less than 600 square feet, it'll cost you $1,200 anyway.
After you get done spraying the foam on the wall, go ahead and check the temperature to make sure that it's not getting too hot. After you get done spraying your foam on the wall for the first coat, go ahead and change the nozzle out on the spray gun. Don't forget to put on some new petroleum jelly around the orifice and select a new fan tip or a little local spot tip on there. I'm using a fan tip for this application. Clear out the nozzle there, make sure everything's spraying evenly. Then go ahead and get back to applying the second coat of the spray foam on the wall. Make sure you have all your electrical cables stapled down securely so that way the spray foam doesn't push them out of the wall. Every so often, check the temperature of the spray foam to ensure you're not getting above the recommended heat setting. I would recommend masking off all of your switch outlet boxes and receptacle outlet boxes so that way you don't get any spray foam inside any of that stuff. Overall, this Frostec 200 kit was easy to spray, and uh, I would definitely purchase another kit and do other walls in my house too. After the second application of the spray foam, Go ahead and check the temperature again to ensure the temperature has not gotten too high. And then go ahead and go over a few little spots and do your little touch-ups with the remaining spray foam that's in the canister. Do a final check on the closed cell spray foam. As you can see here, there's temperatures ranging from about 71 degrees up to around that 80 something degrees, which is uh, pretty normal. So I ended up using the entire Froth Pack 200 on the 72 square feet of wall. I went a little bit of, you know, beyond the 2 inch thickness, trying to use up as much as I could on this wall since really this wall was the only thing that I had to do. And I probably got to somewhere around that 2 inch mark. I don't think I was quite at 3. If you see that uh, Romex wire in the wall, that is set back at least 1 inch from the face of the stud. That kind of gives you an idea, hey, we're we're probably in that two, two and a half inch range. So if you're estimating to do your own project, you know, I would say ideally a spray foam contractor is going to recommend doing two inches. I might have got a little bit more out of this kit, but uh, I certainly want to bet my money on it. So I'd just go ahead and say 72 square feet of wall. I did not include the window area for obvious reasons, and I have a solid header above. Well, not spray foam. I'm 
I'm up all night to spray foam. 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 Alright, well, I'm getting down to the end of my two canisters of spray foam. And so it's time to end this show. Mm-hmm. <laughs>